All right, cool. Here we are in the third round of the Swiss. Both Mike and I lost our last game. Um, I think he's recording too, so that'd be pretty sweet. Check out his his side of stuff. Um, get to see his draft as well, so that'd be fun. Um, here we have another really um, kind of sketchy hand, but I'm going to keep it. Uh, I do like my three and then my bestow five, uh, but maybe I should learn. Yeah, did I check? Did I click yes? Last game? I don't know. I'll have to go back and watch the card. I'm pretty sure I clicked yes, I wanted to mull. I'm really confused. Whatever. Ooh, Mike's playing a little bit of aggro action. Hey, another creature. That's good. That's what I want. Play an agent down. Then a following wolf. Double red. Interesting. Ooh. Dun, dun. Oh, Mike mulled a six. I didn't pay attention to that. Something to be aware of. Lots of red. Which means the agent's probably gonna die. That's okay. Might want to try and get like a two for one out of it, but I'll just wait to bestow my wolf. So we'll see. Ooh, a vaporkin follow up, which means I'm not gonna play a wolf right now. I'm just gonna play to play a vaporkin. Let's see if Mike has a removal spell. Anything? Yep. Ooh, Divine Verdict. Okay. There goes that guy. Um, having the Siren of the Fanged in this board state on turn 5 is just going to be brutal. Because uh, anything Mike plays, yeah. I mean, I'm getting a 4 for this point. Such a good guy. But if you don't know Chrome Conscriptors, it's so good. Yeah, Mike goes, Boom! <laughs> that is a boom. Not gonna lie. Love that card. Uh, that's one of the cards I was hoping to open and play with. So, I could... <laughs> um, I mean, I still want my 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, things can target the Conscriptor and then take a lot of damage, but that's gonna happen anyway, so I'd rather still just have like a bunch of beef on my side of the table. Uh, instead of not having a bunch of beef on my side of the table. Will he let me have the conscriptors? <laughs> I can't say damn. <laughs> no, I'm cool. Alright, sorry, I'm not having too much fun with Mike, and uh, maybe you guys are not enjoying how much fun I'm having, so I'll just play magic now. But uh, yeah, try to attack in for a little bit of damage here. I assume I'm gonna hit for seven plus something else next turn, but what else are you gonna do? Hopefully I can just win on a race. And here's just another example of where having so few ways to interact with my opponents. Oh, Mike's splashing, that's fascinating. Three colors. Interesting. Spiteful Return. Ooh, that's a good card. Good little mini combo. Curious to see what he's splashing here. Here I take four, five, six, seven, eight. I take ten damage. Duh. <laughs> oh, sorry. I have 16. Yeah, so this is a ten point swing. Which is that going to happen? I'm not too sure if that was the right play to play my Siren of the Fang song on that turn because of those options, but I I don't think you can just not play out your board against the Akron Conscriptors. I think you still have to play them. Um, here, I still want to be bashing in. The question is, do I leave back, like, say, the Nyxborn Wolf? Uh, in order, or maybe just play both wolves to have a lot of pressure and then blocking and then just try to win the air. I think that's my best line of defense is kind of going wide against the Akron Conscriptors because then, yeah, they can target and I still get bashed for four in the air, but hopefully the race starts turning in, into on my side a little bit more. So we'll see. Uh, but definitely my bestow gets a lot worse because I don't want to put on a big old Voltron that then uh, the Chrono Conscriptors can just steal away. 
Also, I feel like the, the wolf now should pretty well hold back the conscriptors, but there's plenty of combat tricks in this format to get an extra toughness or regenerate or do something wonky against me, so I'm so not out of the woods and still feel very much behind. Nice foil conscriptors, too. What is my killing? What are you doing? What's happening? Over there. I don't even know what Fall of Hammer does. Alright, target creature control does damage equal. Ah, I see. So, kill my dude. Ooh, and it targets? Ain't that spicy. Rise down target is plus two, plus zero. Can control of another target creature until end of turn until the. Oh, wait, where's. Sorry. I know I'm dying right now. But how does this work? Target creature gains plus two percent against first strike until end of turn. I'm not dead? Oh no, yeah, I thought I was dead. Nice play. Alright. So. Is there any chance in the fiery goodness that I can deal with that card? Oh. I don't think so. Maybe I'm really valuing trying to be too, uh, you know, on tempo when I only have four two drops and a bunch of threes. Because I haven't, this deck hasn't really performed that amazingly uh, as what I thought like a decent curve would do. Mm, I'm trying to think there's better ways for me to deal with such stuff, but I don't think there is. I still don't like these counter spells. Maybe that's just my style. Teaching me T. Yeah, attack for a million, Mike says. Teach me uh, in the comments if I can be uh, learning how to use these cards more effectively. But right now, keeping it the same. All right, and we're back here. Yeah, I want to play first. And... <laughs> Blah. I'm going to keep. I uh, should get my third lane on time. And... Uh... First picked a Chromanticore. <laughs> If, if you don't know what a chromanticore is, that's a, a mythic artifact creature that costs um, one color of every mana, and then uh, it, and it's just insane. It's awesome, but uh, yeah, it's not particularly playable in limited. <laughs> anyway, hey, we got the threes. Yay, cool. So we'll get our two three down, and then hope we start doing some other things with like an aqueous form or something. Crown Hoplite, okay. Cast in our Nyxborn Triton. Could be in some trouble if a Lightning Strike takes out the Triton and Mike wants to go super aggressive and bash in uh, because we don't have the uh, fourth mana yet to get our Emissaries down. And so having like an Aqueous Form on it is going to be kind of key. Yep, there he goes. Wow. I'm surprised that happened because I wasn't anticipating, because I don't think that's always the right play. I, it was definitely good for my game, the Dragon Mantle and Lightning Strike, don't get me wrong. But, uh, it's kind of a, a rare occurrence that that could happen. But whatever. We still have cards. Let's see. All Theros cards minus Nyxborn Triton. Try to keep that in the uh, the big card box as we learn more about the different cards. Chosen by Hilliard. I'm actually okay with that. Mike gets to cycle through a lot right now, but I'm glad it's not on heroic creatures. And sure, Mike gets to pound through for quite a bit, but I'm not particularly worried about it. He's certainly winning that race. Um, I think I'll go ahead and put Aqueous Form on the Emissary, because being able to scry a bunch is going to be good. It should temper uh, a couple of things. I, I'm trying to decide, though, if I want to have the uh, vo uh, another Emissary. Now, I think we're going to save that and play the Voyaging Seder and start doing our scry thing. Wave Crash Train actually is going to be very good with the time to feed and feral location, so I will put that on top. 
And since we do have, oops, I'm an attacker still. I should pay attention. Play our Voyaging Seder, keep up our green instant. Next turn we'll be able to uh, play our 1-4. We won't be able to, or I might just bestow, we'll see. Ooh, Rage of Puff Rose, yes indeedy. There goes the removals. There goes the removals. Mike is to keep bashing through for two. And. Yeah, I'm still cool with. Uh, playing out my Wave Crash Triton. I'll attack in. No, I want to leave up um, that I have a combat trick. Because he does not know that I don't have like a savage surge or something, so the extra point of damage doesn't really matter. Would love to actually draw a land next turn so I can put the emissary on my wave crash triton, which would be pretty um pretty nice. So three, four, five points of damage wasting the turn. I'm actually okay with that. We'll take another five if Mike wants to use all that mana. Could just be taking two right now. And then the Wavecrest Triton will be able to start locking down the Acro and Hoplite fairly regularly. Main th reason why I want the land though is because I want to be able to lock it down with the Emissary instead of anything else. And because uh, I want to be able to have pressure against Mike on, on the backswing. But we did not get that. So now I have to decide. Do I just put a feral invocation and start bashing through? One, two, three, four. I think so. Yeah, because I want to start attacking. So and keep the uh, Voyaging Seder back for our Savage Surge, which now I actually am telegraphing and is there, which <laughs> is fine. What else is there? A Divine Verdict? Okay. Dang, man. Talk about removal. At least the Hoplite's not coming through yet. A sweet deck too. I feel like my deck's so boring. I'm kind of embarrassed. Well done, people. Um, Asp will be helpful here. Doesn't it's still gonna be tapped down? Take three, four, five, six, seven. No, then I'm dead if I play the Asp. I can't play the Asp. What a bummer. It looks like I get to Savage Surge. And then time to feed the emissary away? Well, ain't that a bum diggity? Here comes some desperate moves. Blockers? Mike appropriately does not block. Uh, could easily get removed here, but what is? Nope. We're still going to take a bunch of damage from uh, this Hoplite next turn. But at least we got to kill one of these guys. Sorry, my computer seems to be lagging quite a bit at the moment. These clicks are not going too fast. <laughs> Removal. Removal! <laughs> spicy. I don't know if it's spicy. Desperate, maybe. <laughs> Gotta gain a little bit of life. That's somewhat helpful. Still taking at least six points of damage, two turn clock. But now, I might be able to get some fatties down and stabilize, but 
I just got a feeling these conscriptors are going to start pounding onto the table soon. <laughs> Taking my fatties from me. <laughs> Mike liked the play. Thanks, Mike. Here comes a bunch of ouch. Oh, and yep, mana up for conscriptors. I think they cost four, right? Where's them shiny dudes? Shiny dudes? Oh, no, just an awesome rare. Ho-hum. Uh, does a 4-4 four, four matter? Would I rather have the 4... Because Mike's not going to let me take his dudes. Would I rather have the 4-4 four, four or the 4-5? Four, I think at this point I need the 4-5 uh, to stay alive more. It also means Annex and Sidemeat is less likely to be attacking. go only one card in Mike's hand so that's cool the hoplite attacks I pretty much have to block um, but it does force something like some pumps and a targeting of annex and Siamede. so at least there's that one two three four five six seven I'm just counting um, if with a full mountain pump and maybe some kind of targeting effect on Axis I mean if the, the trample on a fully pumped crow and hoplite would kill me and it won't I think it maximum does three is there anything that kills the asp that also would then in concert with an attack kill me All right, so definitely taking three. I have to block uh, the Corona Hoplite due to threat of activation. Eh? Okay. I could just be wanting to clear the board here, but I imagine there's like a pump on Annex and Siamede to... Uh, should have six. Sorry, Mike. Um, no, just kind of barely got there. Is all. Uh, I think right now we just continue to play out our duders and pray that eventually we get there. This is just going to be a uh, four-four flyer, which one pump means like it just gets eaten. But whatever, got to do what you got to do. Obviously can't attack. I could have put the emissary on the satyr in, instead, but then of course I'm dead, so that's no fun. Drawing land next turn means I'll probably put the emissary on the siren so that I can try to block. Still, a conscriptor gets me, and but I don't think there's any way for me to um, beat a conscriptor. Period. Uh, versus. Right now, uh, if I don't get the Siren in a protected mode, anything that uh, targets Annex and Siamede uh, takes the Siren out. For now, since I really don't want to play into that trick, I'll just go ahead and do a chump. Ah, uh, rise of the challenge. And then that's going to do it with trample. GG's, my friend. Well, guys, um, thanks for watching. Um, I'm glad that we got to see Mike in the uh, finals here, which is super fun. And it was really great to start to play a lot of the Born of the Gods. Not too stoked on my showing of poor losing. Uh, but still, a whole lot of, lot of goodness in just getting to um, play the pre-release. Swiss is nice to start learning these cards better, see more stuff. Um, if I had just been you know, left out of that round two and not get to see Mike's deck, A, it would have been fun to play Mike, and B, I would have gotten to see like, some of the interactions that he's dealing with in his deck. So that's pretty nice. Uh, and no matter what, thanks for watching, as always, on manabluff.com. Uh, I'm Ryan. Uh, I know this is up today on Valentine's Day. Hope everyone has fun dates, if that's what's going on. 
And I don't know when Mike is going to be posting his, but he will be posting um, his pre-release draft as well. So you can check out his and then see his version of it from the finals later on. And then we'll be back next week um, with some more wonderful drafting. Might try to get in some of those sweet sealed release cues if I have time. Not too sure. I have a pretty hectic uh, school load this next week. Um, comment, subscribe on YouTube is where you're watching it. Or uh, if you want to guarantee some responses from me, uh, leave comments on manabluff.com and find me on Twitter, underscore, underscore, RJH, underscore, underscore. Have a wonderful pre-release Moto weekend. Bye-bye.